And next topic, uh, we want to introduce uh, uh, Oxford Instrument, and uh, presented by the, uh, Mr. Winiski Klaus, and he is a he is an executive director at Oxford Instrument Plasma Technology. He has worked in the semiconductor equipment industry for over 20 years, in corporate and uh, operational development rules in Germany, UK, and the United States. Uh, working at Thomas Wong, Janus, and uh, Astro. He joined Oxford Instrument in 2018, growing the plasma deposition and each equipment business unit from uh, 65 million to 150 million scales with five years. As part of the business unit leadership team, Klaus manages a global team of 45 talent engineers who are committed to achieving Oxford's ambiguous strategic plan. And because uh, uh, he cannot present uh, here, so we will have a video and show you. And uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Winiski also asked uh, his colleague, Mr. Ian Wright, uh, coming here to uh, accept your question and answer. So let us see the video, okay? Okay, please. Good morning to everyone, and thank you very much from all of Oxford Instruments for joining us today. We're very grateful that you take such an active interest in our technology and our company. Um, as much as I would have liked to have spoken to you in person today, uh, unfortunately, due to the tightness in the diplomatic staffing here in London, I was unable to get my visa on time to travel. Uh, that is why we are holding this presentation online. I apologize for the inconvenience but our local team is available on site here at Semicon Taiwan to, end, to answer any questions you might have. Let me talk through the agenda. There are really three elements for me that are important. First, a brief overview of who we are and what is our purpose, and then how the global technology trends and our focused market choices really shape plasma technology. Then focusing on our atomic scale process solution to enabling gallium nitride power devices, and then a brief wrap up before opening the floor for any questions you might have. Oxford Instruments has a broad spectrum of capabilities and expertise, and if you wish, we're really a family of eight business units structured into two divisions. There's a material characterization that develops products and solutions that enable the fabrication and characterization of devices down to the atomic scale. And then the second is the research and discovery really provides an advanced solution that create unique environment and enable imaging and analytical measurements down to the molecular or the atomic levels. And if you, our business model is really to form an economic bridge between the core research as well as the advanced industrial applications and notably in the performance material sector through the automotive, the batteries, the pharmaceutical, the life science and semiconductor segments. Uh, a little, a few words about the financial was really uh, important from a customer perspective. On the left-hand side, you see our diversified revenue mix. It's really enabling the group to have an improved understanding of our technologies towards a greener, healthier, and more connected society. On the right-hand side, the revenue mix by geography is really a good reflection of the nature of our industry. And from a financial performance, it is import important for me to emphasize the health and focus on R&D investments. Today, the group generates well over half a billion dollars in sales. Uh, we're profitable from an operator, operating income perspective, and we also have a strong balance sheet. So all key metrics, when you operate in an industry that has two, three, or four years of product R&D cycle. And that, obviously, is important in here as well, that we can invest throughout the cycle. Um, and also from an employee perspective, well over 20% of our employees working in R&D, the largest function of our employee. So from a global presence perspective, we're really a global organization with well over 1,600 employees worldwide employed across the Americas, Europe, and Asia. Uh, focus, maybe if we're focusing here on Asia, uh, key for us is to be really closer to our largest end market as well as the target customer. 
which is reflected in our sales and service infrastructure, but also in our largest outbound investment, operating an application lab here in Itri at the Sinshu Science Park in Taiwan. And these feedback loops from the region are really important to understand our job to be done, as well as making an improved product investment decision. Let me now focus on plasma technology. <clears throat> our global trends and our focused market choices are really driving our business. Oxford Instruments Plasma Technology was founded in the early 80s and uh, over the last 40 years we really have become a trusted and reliable partner in the compound semiconductor as well as in the performance material supply chain. On the left hand side uh, we see a clear trend towards the atomic scale processing requirements and, and our core now is the focus on applications where plasma based deposition and etch processes are required. On the right hand side as mentioned uh, we're really a proud to be a founding member of the compound semiconductor equipment industry when it was in an excess of over 3,000 systems installed and in the field being served. But key for me is also overall in the organization the performance mindset that you find of really delivering more good wafers per day at a lower cost to our customer which is only possible if you have a strong application understanding which is becoming increasingly important as the industry migrates to higher volumes. With our focused market choices, we really decided to invest into technology trends only compound semiconductor uh, can do. And as mentioned, our focus is grounded in the global technology megatrends, whose influence will have an enormous impact over the future of our business. And we believe the positioning for a multi-year inflection of Oxford Instruments markets are really happening now. The end markets are transitioning from smartphone application-centric to multiple applications which has a huge impact on uh, serving unit volume market. And this then resol results in performance requirements will increase to be faster, more efficient, and eventually lower cost for our customer. And this has a direct impact on the cost requirements uh, on the equipment design, the wafer size transition, as well as the FAP integration. So it's important to stress that we have an enabling mature technology portfolio but also, we don't make the markets. And therefore, market intelligence is key when making investment decisions. Uh, we believe that the gallium nitride power device market are really reaching a second inflection point in terms of application adoption, and really driven by the increasing demand of cost-effective and efficient power devices. So we use mainly third-party market research but also then we triangulated with our internal strategic market intelligence to validate our investment decision into our focused market choices. And as you can see, according to your development, but also the likes of IHS or Gartner, we're still in the early innings in terms of adoption of gallium nitride power devices. But more importantly, we believe gallium nitride really enable applications that don't exist today, which carries a huge opportunity in itself. <clears throat> in order to meet the growing demand of atomic scale processing and compound semiconductor, Oxford Instruments has a dedicated investment program to really unlock the exponential increase of application going into production. Over the next years, we're investing well in excess of 100 million US dollars into the state of the art facility, as well as a dedicated R&D program. As applications know how it's becoming increasingly more important to the industry, we are significantly investing into the application lab capabilities to align with these manufacturing standards here in the UK, as well as in Taiwan and Italy. A few details on the new facility here in, in the UK. The overall FAP size is increasing, or the facility size is increasing by 44%, but the application lab capacity was almost triple as the application hours become increasingly important. Manufacturing space will increase by 15%, really emphasizing the focus on higher level assembly, reducing lead time and focus on, on controlling the quality in the supply chain. The move to the new facility will be completed by the second quarter of 2023, right on time uh, for the market. Application now is becoming increasingly important, as I mentioned, not only to the industry, but also to us. And due to the growing device performance, a closer feedback to the application is more and more required. Having the capabilities to 
do all processes with technologies we sell and validate it through a variety of analysis tools is a real differentiator considering the size of our business. The e relationship has grown over the last 10 years and has been a vital in getting really this manufacturing mindset and feedback loops into the organization. So um, we're working in an industry where we see, as mentioned before, an exponential increase of number of materials used in manufacturing. Atomic scale processing is key for this performance scaling. Material integration still not solved in some cases. So we see adoption of new high K materials, for example, which brings challenges to the equipment industry that really enables these major technology infections like ALD or ALE need to align with these manufacturing standards as the power electronic customers have very, very stringent uh, manufacturing standards. So understanding customer, customer models early and deep in the collaboration is important. So therefore we are very pleased and acknowledge the contribution made towards the data shown in the next few, few slides, namely working with companies like Encris, Itri in Taiwan, Latex in Germany, or a number of gallium nitride power device manufacturers in the US, Japan, and Europe. So the next few slides will really focus on our atomic scale process solutions for gallium nitride power as well as CRF device. From an application perspective, we focus on a range of different normally off devices in production or in development for fail-safe power electronics applications such as P-GAN hands or the cascope. The recessed gate mishand is one of the normally off-device solutions. These device types benefit from lower leakage current, higher device breakdown, and therefore improved reliability. But still today has technical challenges to overcome to improve the ease of manufacturability. Here at Oxford Instruments, we have a range of optimized atomic scale process solutions to solve critical processing challenges to enable the reliable manufacture and performance of normally off recess gate mishaps. One such technical challenge of manufacturing a recess gate mishap is ensuring that the etching of the gate region results in a uniform etch depth, low damage to the algon GAN surface, as well as the accuracy and the remaining thickness of the algon for a particular recess edge structure and this to allow for positive threshold voltage to really enable the normally off operations. The atomic layer edge or ALE is a cyclical low edge rate controlled edge process with angstrom tricycle edge rate which then enables the control and accuracy of algon edge for the recess gate and we're reducing device damage at the interface by creating a smooth remaining surface. Atomic layer deposition or ALD is the analogous cyclical deposition process to ALE and has been used in the silicon semiconductor world for many years. Plasma ALD is used for deposit deposition of the highest quality passivation or dielectric layers in the gate recess region, ensures with low damage and excellent conformality without compromising obviously on throughput or cost of ownership. So how do we enable our early process? <clears throat> well, first, we've developed an optimized edge depth monitoring solution with LaTeX to really complement the ALE process and ensure that the target remaining algon thickness is achieved with 0.5 nanometer in order to ensure positive threshold voltage and the normally off device operation. Further, we then demonstrated the excellent correlation between the target remaining thickness of algon, in this example, five nanometer, by the edge depth monitoring and ALE process with the actual thickness achieved, which was then validated by a TAM. TAM apologies. We protected this step with a patent, or we filed a patent on this edge depth monitoring solution and it's fully integrated with our ALE system hardware as well as the software for use in a production environment. So we're very proud that such a premium um, power device manufacturer like Rome really had the confidence to invest in this technology and take this and qualify their next generation GANHAMP device um, into production. To take this further, we partnered with our long-time collaborators here at ITRI in Taiwan to really integrate our ALE solution into 
their gallium nitride methane production process flow to prove the device manufacturability in a pilot line. So we are very pleased that we have achieved the normally off recess gate MISAM with positive thre thre threshold voltage of 0.7 volt with an accurate 1 nanometer algorithm remaining. The important here that the high device breakdown and low on resistance was achieved. So we are looking forward to continuing the development work here with ITRI, but also moving to the next stage of process scale up. And I think this is a very nice example of what can be achieved through the significant partnership role. Moving to atomic layer deposition, um, our plasma ALD system delivers the highest quality gallium nitride hemp passivation or dielectric deposition, and it is an established process of record in the in the market leading GAN power electronic device supplier when we're referring to the your development data. Our differentiator has been really the optimized plasma pretreatment of gallium nitride, nitrates in general, or high K passivation materials by plasma ALD, which is then qualified in the supply chain with the leading device manufacturer, but also with their foundry partners, and today is delivering 5,000 wafers per month per chamber. So in this period of delivering more good wafers per day at a lower cost, a key for the ALD process obviously is the, pro is the throughput, and it's per definition a slower process than the conventional deposition or passivation pro uh, process steps. So our <coughs> AtomFab ALD system delivers four times improvement in throughput and cost of ownership compared to the previous production qualified plasma ALD systems in the market. The major effort for us was really to apply semiconductor standards to compound semiconductor solutions, and we went through a rigorous 12 months production qualified program with gallium nitride device partners before really releasing the product into the HVM environment. And as I said, you can see on the data on the right hand side. Well, this slide is really to emphasize what can be achieved through the significant partnership role with customers. And equally, we have done this with silicon carbide, where we just released a plasma polish EpiPrep process solution as an alternative to CMP. And we validated it with a complete feasibility study through this customer partnership approach. Let me now wrap up before we will answer any questions you might have. For instance, wants to compete where we can provide innovative production proven solution for gallium nitride hemp manufacturing that enables more good wafers per day at a lower cost. Our trusted partnership model is critical when solving key challenges on the atomic scale for next generation device manufacturing. Our DNA is plasma processing to maximize and enable performances through low damage, high quality gallium nitride devices. And finally, I really would like to record the, the gratitude to both the team here at Oxford Instruments as well as our partners uh, for the commitment and support we have received during the delivery of this project. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you, Klaus. And uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Ian Wright, the uh, Vice President, uh, Sales and Business Development Asia of Plasma Technology, Oxford Instrument, for answering your question right now. So if you have any question, please raise your hand is there any question? I thought I was going to have an easy life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do see, uh, you, you know, you, your company very specialized on compound semiconductor, especially you come in from a damage point of view, you have, uh, you know, this uh, atomic layer scare uh, etching and also deposition. I believe you're probably coming online um, very first or second I I in the industry, right? I think from that respect, yes. I, th I think we also have help that we have other divisions that actually help us measure the damage with, with atomic force microscopy and the likes. And as a relatively small equipment supplier against some of the big behemoths in this industry, we have to grow with a new market. We can't replace people in 300 millimeter. We don't do 300 millimeter. We stick at 200, and it's a little bit interesting over the last few years that people are starting to come back to 200 and uh, and, and 150 millimeter. So we're trying to do. 
We've been in this market for a long, long time with R&D, and I would say in the past, we've given the market away to other equipment manufacturers. This time, we're growing with it. So we're moving, we're moving and have moved from R&D into production, but keeping a very strong foothold remaining in the R&D side so we can bring new things on. So uh, the one good question is that, uh, you know, in the past, I think uh, the compound semiconductor uh, process equipment is probably stay in a very, uh, I would say, boutique or, or very unique position, right? But right now, with all this uh, prime material and, and you know, this 800-pound uh, gorilla coming into play, uh, what do you think, uh, you know, you, you will differentiate yourself and from, from like, uh, you know, a prime material? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an excellent question. I mean, I mean, they're excellent companies, you know, whether it's an applied or a lamb, or, or an SPTS, a little bit, a uh, little bit smaller, under KLA now. Ob obviously, they need markets, uh, markets much bigger than than ourselves to be able to start start production. So we can sort of grow up. I think the other thing also is we can be. I don't. I wouldn't say we want to be a lot more flexible because if you become too flexible, you can't do things on a day to day basis reliably. But I think we can be more flexible. We can move. You know, we can work with the customers more. Uh, and, and individualize to a little bit the tools, but you know, try and stay as standard as possible. So there's room in this market for everybody. Um, you know, to be honest with you, I'd, I'd love to be a billion dollar company, but I don't need to be. For us to be successful, you know, we don't need all the market as well. Of course, we're gonna go for it, but we don't need it to, to be successful. This year, maybe next year, the bosses will say they want more. Yes. Yes, actually, I think uh, a, a good uh, competitive company, they need to depend on their uh, core competence. So for example, uh, as for instrument, uh, maybe the plasma technology is their uh, unique core competence and they can uh, use the te techniques to, for example, for deposition or for the uh, etching. It's a, it's a good uh, experiment in your company, I think. I, I think it is. I mean, for, for ALD, I mean, there are a number of excellent ALD organizations out there. Primarily, they've been thermal. From day one, when we came in with ALD, we came in with plasma. So we can do thermal, but you know we aren't the best for thermal. But for plasma, we've been around it for a long time. So when we came to do the etch, it was an obvious choice to sort of say, OK, let's flip the process around. And it's still early days. Um, you know, we started off with GAN and some silicon, some silicon base. We've got people in 4G, uh, 6G now looking at indium phosphide, gallium arsenide based. We've got people in quantum. We've got more than enough to play with. It's, it's a very, very exciting area. Good. And thank you very much. Okay. And thank thanks you. again.